we're playing the race to 100. The rules are straightforward. We have two players, and we'll start the count at zero. Each turn, a player will add a number between 1 and 8. The game ends when we've hit 100, and whoever hits 100 is the winner. You are going first. The puzzle for you is to devise a winning strategy. Figure out how to play this game that will guarantee you the win every single time you play. While you think about that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. Your hint for today is that this is a variant of NIM, a class of games I talk about in Chapter 2 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. And the key to figuring out how to win this game is to use backward induction. Are you ready for the answer? When I played this type of game as a kid, I found it very complex. But once you learn backward induction, finding the optimal strategy is easy. My problem was that I would think about the game from the beginning. Now that seems like a natural way to go about things. But in fact, instead of thinking about the first few numbers, what we really should be focusing on is the last few numbers and working our way backward from there. To start, we can ignore the number 100. You'll never have to make a play from there because the game's already over at that point. We do need to think about 99 or 98 or 97 and so forth, however. And it's immediately obvious that if you ever have an opportunity to make a play from a number between 92 and 99, you will win the game immediately. That's because the rules allow you to add any number from one through eight and as a consequence, any number 92 through 99 allows you to add the right number to get to 100. For example, from 92, you can add 8. From 93, you can add 7, and so forth. I've colored these in gold to reflect the fact that they are winning positions. You want to be able to make a play from any one of these numbers because it allows you to win the game. In contrast, 91 is a losing position. You are obligated to add some number to this, which means you are going to ultimately leave your opponent in a position where the number is at 92 through 99. And from what we know before, when your opponent plays from 92 to 99, they're going to be able to win. So really, this game isn't about reaching 100 first. It's about forcing your opponent to play from 91 first. If you can do that, then you are going to win the game. So on the end of your turn, you really want to be in a position where you've put the number at 91 and force your opponent to play from there. If we continue to work backward, we can think about how to get there. And in fact, if you are playing from any position between 83 to 90, you can force the total up to 91. If you're at 83, you add eight. If you're at 84, you add seven and so forth. And from what we learned before, if we force your opponent to 91, you can win the game from there. Once more, I've colored those numbers, 83 through 90, in gold to reflect the fact that they are winning positions. You want to end up here. In contrast, 82 is a losing position. No matter what number you add from here, you are going to put your opponent in the 83 through 90 range, which for the reasons that we described before, allows them to win the game. So really, this isn't a game about racing to 100, nor is it a game about racing to 91. Working backward, we now see that this is really a race to 82. You want to be the person who gets the total up to 82 to force your opponent to play from there, and from there, they will have to lose the game. Perhaps you're detecting the pattern now. Any number 74 through 81 allows you to add the total up to 82, which then secures you the victory. So those are gold numbers. In contrast, 73 is a losing position. Anything that you play from here allows your opponent to add up to 82, which then allows them to win the game. So we want to avoid having to start from 73 
and force our opponent to be the one who plays at 73. And we can do that from any number between 65 and 72. So we don't want to focus so much on getting to 73, so much as forcing our opponent to play from 64. If they play from 64, they have to put the number in the range between 65 and 72, which allows you to get to 73 and thereby eventually win the game. Well, if we're at any number between 56 and 63, we can force the total up to 64. So those are winning positions. 55, in contrast, is a losing position. Working backward, the previous eight numbers are winning positions because you can always force the total up to 55 from there, but you can't do that from 46. 46 is a losing position. But that means that the previous eight numbers, 38 through 45, are winning positions, which makes 37 a losing position, but that makes 29 through 36, again, the previous eight numbers, winning positions, but 28 is a losing position. If 28 is a losing position, then the previous eight numbers from there, 20 to 27, are winning positions. 19 is a losing position. 11 through 18 are winning positions. 10, however, is a losing position. And as we close in at the beginning of this game, we need to think a little bit carefully about what's going on here. But 2 through 9 are still winning positions because you can force the number up to 10. And now we're basically at the start. One is a losing position because you can't get the number to 10 from there. And we know that 10 is a losing position. So that means that we have one as one of these non-gold numbers. And as a consequence, we now know how to start off the game. If you move first by taking exactly one, you can force the rest of the game to work in your favor. Specifically, the winning strategy is as follows. You choose one with the first move, and then for the rest of the game, you choose the opposite of your opponent's previous move. For example, if they picked eight, you pick one. If they picked seven, you picked two, and so forth. You're just going on the mirror end of that one through eight value. I think it's interesting that a relatively complicated looking game actually has a very simple winning strategy. So simple, in fact, that you can teach it to a very young child. This is something that I've done quite a few times before, and it's always fun to have those kids play against their parents and have their parents be very dumbfounded as they are always losing this game. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.